I believe you provided her with the necessary information two days ago, which should be sufficient for Emily. At least I can say to God that I tried to stop them, but they didn't listen. Daddy I can tell God that mom and dad committed crime against orphaned children. Give him a chance. Yes Peter uncle I agree. We should give him a chance. Maybe he'll see the right path after talking to the pastor. They are orphaned children, Mason. You know what you've done to them. They're concerned about your reputation. They don't want your name tarnished in the news. Gonzalo, I understand everything you've said to me, and I've begun working on the I plan. I am fully committed to following your instructions and I will do whatever you ask of me. Yes, let's focus on implementing the plan. We'll see what unfolds in court, and I'm confident that we will emerge victorious. Who's going to tell your mother? Just relax and calm down. Consider your financial struggles. Two simple lines. Yes, Mason got an update. Has your brother's daughter contacted you or not? I think after so many things, she will not contact with you. Why would she contact me? I believe you provided her with the necessary information two days ago, which should be sufficient for Emily. I've already assured you that the documents are entirely genuine and can be verified from any source. So, please relax and don't worry about it. You underestimate my skills and abilities, my dear wife. Yes, I know you well, my husband. You're very skilled and capable of handling these kinds of situations. I'm truly satisfied. May nothing ever go wrong for us. Yes, let's relax and enjoy life. If our son doesn't want this money, then there's no need to give it to him. If he wants to work as a waiter in the hotel, then let him. There's no need to feel sorry for him. I think he'll be washing dishes his whole life, so let him. But as husband and wife, let's fully enjoy our lives. I was thinking of taking you on a trip abroad. We'll spend at least a month there. What do you think, my dear wife? I've also stopped worrying about him. If he doesn't want this money, then there's no need to pity on him. He's becoming so stubborn, refusing to follow our advice. So, why should we offer him any relief? In a few years, he'll get married and start living with his wife. Then he'll understand how expenses increase after marriage, especially when they have a baby and he has to bear those costs. Then he'll realize why dad did this. It's a problem of the new generation. They don't want to face reality, preferring to live in fantasy world. This is the harsh truth. If you want to lead a happy life, you need money. But for a happy life, you have to spend wisely and choose the right path. There's no need to resort to wrongdoing. Are you suggesting this money is good? Are you claiming a portion meant for orphan children? Is that right? Then I don't want it. I'm content with my job. I could wash dishes my whole life, but I refuse this bad thing. What do you think of people like you, who seek to take advantage of orphaned children? Do you think God doesn't notice? Every step you take is observed by God, and everything is recorded in a book by your guardian angels. That book will be revealed on Judgment Day. People may forget, but God never does. Keep that in mind, Mama and Daddy. By the way, since when have you been my father? You've also said inappropriate things in front of me to your mother a few days ago, but I remained silent. But now, I refuse to tolerate anything from you. If you don't want it, then leave my house. Why are you living in my house? Who will pay the rent in our previous house? Your salary is nothing. I know how people treat you at the restaurant, giving you small tips and how your boss pays you salary. I won't say anything more. But keep it in mind. If you behave like this with us again, I'll kick you out. This place belongs to me. I'm alive, not dead. Daddy, please listen to me one last time. You and Mama always think you're very clever and wise, but remember God's law. If you intend to do harm, it will come back to you. Keep that in mind. I truly feel sorry for Smith and Emily. They lost their parents at a young age, and now they're going door to door asking for help. While you, their real uncle, have taken advantage of their situation by taking their property. Do you think that's right? And if you believe it is, then daddy, I don't want to live here anymore. I refuse to be a part of this crime. When I die, I want to able to tell God that I stood against my parents because they were wronging orphans.
At least I can say to God that I tried to stop them, but they didn't listen. Daddy I can tell God that mom and dad committed crime against orphaned children. And daddy, last and final I can tell all of this to God because he saw what was happening. E, E, E brother didn't stop. I'm leaving now. I can stay with my restaurant staff, but I won't stay here. This is my final decision. I won't interfere in your discussion next time. We don't want children like you who speak against their father. Go wherever you want. Just don't disturb us. Emily and Smith, listen to me. I've found a significant clue regarding your dad's properties. Your dad placed an advertisement in the newspaper six months ago to sell one of his shops. However, according to these documents, your daddy already sold that property seven years ago. This doesn't make sense. Uncle Peter, you're absolutely right, and I want to share something with you too. As I mentioned yesterday, I want to visit the properties our dad owned and find out who's residing there. Yes, yes tell me what you found. The lady told me that my father would often go there to collect rent, and after his death, Uncle Mason took over. Yes, that is indeed odd. Now, Emily, listen to me. You need to write an application to the revenue judge. Okay, I will write, but what will happen then? I've shown the documents to many lawyers, but they failed to uncover the truth. But my dad's friend gave me this clue. Emily, listen to me. This is just my suggestion, before taking this matter to court, we should meet with the pastor. We can explain the situation to him, and perhaps your uncle will listen to him. Because I know your uncle don't want to talk with anyone in your family regarding this matter. And perhaps your uncle will listen to him. The pastor may be able to make him understand that what he's doing is wrong, and he might agree to return your property. Yes, that's not a bad idea. I'll meet with our pastor and explain everything. Hopefully, he can help convince my uncle to return our property. Because this is a serious matter, and your uncle committed fraud against you both. If this goes to court, he could face serious consequences. But as relatives, we should give him a chance. Yes Peter uncle I agree. We should give him a chance. Maybe he'll see the right path after talking to the pastor. That's why I suggest we all go to the pastor together, explain the situation, and let him take further steps. Yes Peter uncle, I agree, if you think it's best, we can start from there. How are you pastor? I hope you are well. Yes, I'm fine by the grace of God Almighty. How may I help you? Pastor, we need your help. These orphan children are really worried and facing a property issue. We hope you can guide their uncle. Because he has taken advantage of them. Maybe you know the Mason, Carter's younger brothers. You don't worry at all. I know Mason well and have met with him many times. I've tried to make him understand. Yes, Pastor. Before taking this matter to court, we want to resolve it within the family. Once it goes public, Things will become complicated, and our uncle's image could end up in the newspapers due to fraud allegations. He might even have face police station. That's why, despite everything he's still our uncle, our blood relation. Our father's brother. We don't want to see him behind bars. My conscience doesn't allow it. Your perspective is commendable. Let me speak with Mason. Let's see what he say about this. How are you Mason? I hope you are fine. Yes, I'm fine pastor. What about you? Listen Mason, I've seen everything. You've defrauded these children. Remember God words in Isaiah 117 learn to do right? Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. I won't say anything to you, pastor. It's better if you stay out of this. If they want to go court. It will be a significant problem for them. I have no problem facing the court. These are legal documents. I haven't committed any fraud. If they want to take legal action, I have also a team of lawyers to handle it. 
But I won't return the property. It's mine. Because I pay for it. They are orphan children, Mason. You know what you've done to them. They're concerned about your reputation. They don't want your name tarnished in the newspaper. Please reconsider and give it to them. I don't know what type of person you are. Don't you know what God said in Romans 15, 1 we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves? Mason open your eyes and recall what God said in Galatians 6, to carry each other's burden, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Thessalonians 5:14 and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. I am well aware that you are speaking lies to me, but still, I am trying to make you understand. Smith and Emily are considering you, but you are so stubborn that greed has blinded you. Mason, fear God's punishment. You are doing very wrong. I know very well. If they want to ruin my reputation, let them pastor. I don't care. This property is mine, I have all proofs and I won't give it to them under any circumstances. Peter, he's a liar and deserves punishment. I know he's lying to you all and defrauding. Don't worry about anything. I'll pray for these children. Everything will be sorted out. O oh Lord, we come before you today with heavy hearts, seeking your divine guidance and protection for these orphaned children. You know the struggles and challenges they face and we ask for your loving presence to surround them each day. Lord, we lift up these precious children into your care. Comfort them in their times of sorrow and uncertainty, and grant them the strength and courage to face each new day with hope and resilience. We also pray for those who seek to do them harm or exploit their vulnerability. Soften their hearts, Lord, and help them to see the error of their ways. Guide them towards repentance and righteousness, that they may turn from their wrongdoing and seek to do good in the world. God, we trust in your unfailing love and mercy. We know that you are the ultimate source of hope and healing, and we place our faith in your divine plan for these children's lives. May they grow to be strong, resilient, and compassionate, shining your light wherever they go. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you for your efforts, Pastor. We'll need to consult with the legal team and file an application on behalf of the children. Yes, you can proceed with the legal proceedings now. God's help with you. Peter Uncle, we've done our part, but Uncle refuses to return our property. Yes, Emily, you're right. He's incredibly stubborn, and the pastor also agree that he's lying to all of you. You need to write the application for the judge and then we'll take this matter to court. Okay Peter Uncle, I understand. Now is the time to claim our father's property. Since he doesn't want to resolve this within the family, if he's willing to tarnish his reputation in front of the world, then so be it. Yes, you're absolutely right. Now, we need to take the next steps and God is with us. Mason, you see. Your niece has brought the pastor to our home. Just look at her tactics. Don't worry about it. They can do whatever they want. But I will not give back this property to them. That's final. Of course, why should we give it back to these children? We spent a lot of money to obtain these documents. And this property belongs to us as well. We shouldn't give it back. I said relax and stay calm. If they want to take us to court, let them. I don't care. I have another option, and I'll use it through my legal advisors. Yes, we will fight until the end. But we will not surrender. Exactly. Don't worry about it. Everything will be settled soon. I know about Peter. He's the mastermind behind everything. Emily and Smith are completely influenced by him. They believe they can win this case against me. But I'll deal with Peter later. I know how to handle these people who pretend to care and show love. I'm simply biding my time. Let's focus on winning this case first. After that, I'll personally visit Peter's house and speak with his wife. Who are they to interfere in our matters and who give them the authority? I believe they have nothing better to do, that is why they're meddling in this matter. Let's stay focused on winning this case for now. 
We can address everything else later. Sir, this is the application you requested me to prepare on behalf of the children. Please take it and submit it to the judge. Yes, Peter. Give it to me. And they will submit this application to the revenue judge. The notice will be issued in a few hours, and the court will summon Mason. Yes, we are truly grateful to you, after God. Because you have found a very strong clue. Currently, Mason is collecting rent from his deceased brother's property. Don't worry about it. Everything will come to light, and if he tries to be clever, Mason will be caught. I know how to handle this type of case. Thank you so much, sir, for your kindness. We could never repay you for your efforts. Peter, don't say that. I am doing what is right. I also want to please God, and if do good to anyone, good will come to me. Mr. Gonzalo, I understand everything you've said to me, and I've begun working on the plan. I am fully committed to following your instructions and I will do whatever you ask of me. Yes, let's focus on implementing the plan. We'll see what unfolds in court, and I'm confident that we will emerge victorious. Listen, Sandra, this is a great offer for you. Your husband has been unemployed for three months and I understand you're facing financial difficulties. All you have to do is say these words in front of the judge, and I won't ask you for rent for one year. I'll give you a break for one year. Just repeat these two lines in front of the judge, and then everything will be resolved. Think about my offer. But Mr. Mason, if my mother finds out about this, she won't spare me at any cost. I know this isn't right, and you keep pressuring me to say it. My mother is very strict about these things. Sandra, who's going to tell your mother? Just relax and calm down. Consider your financial struggles. Two simple lines could give you a year's relief from rent. Think about it. And if my husband finds out about this, what will I do? Nothing will happen to you. Please try to see my perspective, otherwise, you'll have to pay $34,000 in rent for the year. Whereas I'm offering you relief from that burden. Okay, what time I must be reached in court? After 10 am. You must be there. Now I will allow Mr. Mason's lawyer to present his case. Mr. Justice, as I have shown you the documents, this property was sold by Mr. Carter seven years ago due to his financial difficulties. He sold it to his brother, Mr. Mason, after his business failed. Carter's children are now claiming that the property belongs to their father, but the reality is that it was sold to Mr. Mason. He has been collecting rent from the shops and houses, I have brought witnesses to prove my client's innocence and refute the allegations against Mr. Mason. Many individuals are conspiring against him to tarnish his reputation. They have manipulated these innocent children into dragging their real uncle into court. Mr. Justice I have presented the facts, and we are ready to be held accountable. Now, I request to call Mr. Mason's witnesses. Okay, court allows. Mr. Justice my name is Sandra. When Mr. Carter was alive, he introduced me to his brother and stated that Mr. Mason would be collecting rent from us because he had sold the property to him. This property belongs to Mr. Mason. I feel pity on you. It's quite unusual a father being a millionaire while his son serves tea here. Wilson, but I find solace in my conscience. I'm not like you creating fake documents for monetary gain. Remember, God will hold you accountable for your actions. I believe I should lodge a complaint with your supervisor about your behavior. 
you clearly lack the skills to handle customers. Can I escalate this matter to your boss? If not, then please leave. But remember, you've supported my father in this fraud against orphans. Soon everything will be revealed to you. <laughs> E, E, E. Wilson, I'm currently at the hospital. Today, I had an appointment with the doctor. After an ultrasound, the doctors informed me that we're expecting twins after eight years of our marriage. But both babies have no heartbeat. The doctors also mentioned that it's going to be very challenging to save them. E, E, E. E, E, E. God, why this happened with me? Wilson, as I've told you before, never forget that God is watching. Do you think those orphan children you deceived are crying out without God hearing them? He hears everything. I'm telling you now, you still have a chance. I saw in the newspaper ad that there's a court hearing today. Go and confess to the judge. Admit that you forged those documents and reveal who instructed you to do so. You still have time, trust me. Yes Richard you're saying right. I did wrong with those children. Don't waste your time. Hurry up, please. Mr. Justice, my name is Stephen, and I run a shop behind the water plant road. The owner of the shop is Mr. Mason. Two years ago, Mr. Carters came to me along with Mr. Mason, and confirmed that Mr. Mason has already paid to him for his shop. He assured me that Mr. Mason would be receiving the rent from me. Thank you can go now. Okay, Mr. Justice. Mr. Justice, I'd like to address something here, I've already heard the witnesses presented by Mr. Mason lawyer in court. However, I have additional information to add to this matter. According to my colleague, Mr. Mason claims ownership of Mr. Carter's property. I have brought evidence to support my argument. Mr. Justice, if Mr. Carter, who is deceased, sold the property to his brother seven years ago as indicated by these documents, then how could he have advertised his shop six months ago? Who are you? Why are you crying? Mr. Justice, please grant me permission to approach the stand. There is something I need to share with you that has not yet been brought to your attention. Alright, you may approach and present your statement regarding this issue. Mr. Justice, I stand before this court to confess my wrongdoing. These documents are not authentic. Mr. Mason paid me $95,000 to fabricate them, and I have done so on multiple occasions. Many people have approached me for similar services. I have also bribed officials in various departments to ensure the legitimacy of these documents. Additionally, Mr. Mason promised me a car if I fabricated documents for his deceased brother's home, where Carter's children currently reside. Mr. Justice, God has inflicted upon me a severe punishment and I acknowledge my wrongdoing before you. I am prepared to face any consequences for my actions. It's indeed distressing to hear about the misconduct occurring within our institutions, particularly when it involves such a betrayal by a blood relative towards orphaned children. The court will announce its final decision on this matter in 20 minutes. Thank you. Now, I am ready to announce the final decision. After thorough discussions with four to six justices, we have reached a conclusion. I hereby order the chief of police to arrest all individuals involved in this matter. All bank accounts associated with them will be immediately closed, and airports will be notified to prevent any attempts to flee the country. Mr. Mason sent to jail on five charges for 20 years. First, for lying to the court. Second, for presenting false documents. Third, for committing fraud against orphan children, fourth, for collecting rent from the property unlawfully, and fifth, for attempting to bribe individuals, which is illegal according to our country's laws. Furthermore, 
I order the head of commissioner to issue arrest warrants for all officials associated with the institute involved in this matter. They are to be arrested immediately. Wilson is sentenced to 10 years in jail and must pay a significant fine for his crimes. As for the orphan children, the court has decided to grant them free education up to university level. Additionally, authorities are directed to provide them with employment opportunities after completing their education. Justice has been served, and the court is adjourned.